Right, so Mark, if you'd like to introduce yourself, please. Hello and welcome to everyone in the room. My name is Mark Hooker, as Lynn said. Uh, I'm a lecturer here at Loughborough College and I'm hoping to do some insights and things with the iPads for you today. So just before we start, it would be useful if we could get a bit of an insight into your own experiences with using mobile technology in the classroom. So if you could use the uh, poll just above the participants list to tell us are you using mobile technology regularly in the classroom, occasionally, or just thinking about it and haven't yet started? So if you could vote now, please. Okay, some of you have put some letters um, in the chat pane, I think, as, as well, rather than using the drop down menu. But it gives us an idea, thank you. So, some of you have used, used it occasionally, uh, one or two using, it re using the devices regularly in the classroom, uh, but the majority uh, not yet or very occasionally. Okay, thank you, that's, that's useful background. So, Mark, could you tell us a little bit about this um, ELSIS project that you've been involved with this year? Indeed, yes. The challenge originally was because the, the learners were becoming a little bit turned off from the subjects and lots of textbooks um, and lots of flip charts, kind of lots of traditional teaching that I was doing. Um, so at the start of this year, we actually managed to get this funding from ELSIS to buy some iPads and look at how we could use the technology to actually improve the situation kind of the students. So what we did was we bought a series of iPads, we bought a series of cases to make sure they were safe, um, and then started introducing them to the classroom and trying to find innovative ways of delivering that curriculum by new technologies. The learners that we used were actually uh, a group of level three students from quite a difficult demographic who um, had struggled from kind of low level um, education all the way through. So we hoped that it would be a very useful idea to use learners that were struggling to see if we could improve their stats. And these were learners, weren't they, that had already done one year of their course and having the traditional delivery methods and you wanted to try something new to try and engage them more uh, in the curriculum. Okay, thank you. So what were some of the other key drivers for change that make you want to change the way you delivered the curriculum? Well, as you can see from the two images we've got on the screen, um, the top one is a very traditional look at the industry, a um, very mechanical area, very dirty. The bottom one shows a better reflection on how the trade has moved on. You can see from this particular image there, the person's quite clean, he's wearing gloves, he's using a laptop, and also just to the left, there's a little blue box, um, and that's what's called a picoscope. That particular uh, device picks up very, very sensitive information from the vehicles, because the vehicles have moved on with their computing technology. So, from an industry perspective, if the students move out of our area and have not improved their IT skills within the motor trade setting, they will actually have very poor employability skills. I see, thank you. So, um, when you started the project, did you have any previous experience of using mobile technologies? Apart from my standard mobile phone at the time, no. Um, I'd never used an iPad before, um, so in the summer last year, um, was the first one that ever picked an iPad up. Oh, right, that's interesting. So it must have been a steep learning curve for you. It was. So how did you decide um, which device you were going to use for your project? What was some of your criteria? Well, it was utilising some of the staff we've got in our um, department in the college that actually had more understanding of what was out there than myself. So we looked at a range of devices but found that looking at the kind of Apple products that we've got, the usability of how they worked just suited better our needs. I see. And um, you, you had a sort of one-to-one -one relationship between iPads and learners, didn't you? Yes. For the, the pilot, we did decide to make it one-to-one. -one. Uh, we personalised them. We allowed them to use their own iTunes, which is something we'll cover in the kind of lessons learned later on. But initially, to get the buy-in on the pilots, it worked very, very well to have a one-to-one -one relationship with them. Okay, and, and this image here is, is showing um, how you 
sort of thought about protecting the devices in the workshop environment, and that was fairly essential in a motor vehicle environment, I would have thought. 100% essential. And the devices that you can see there, as you know, are very delicate if you drop them. This particular surround, the actual case, uh, is military test, as it says on the screen. The reports from the military are you can throw them out of airplanes, you can run over them with tanks. However, I've not tested that much, but we have dropped them from a six foot height, and it didn't damage it in the slightest. Okay, right. And I think uh, this, they're not very expensive, are they, really? It's, a, it's an investment, really, to protect your, your iPads. The, re the, re pounds. the retail is £50, but we bought them in at £30. Okay, for a bulk buy problem. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. So, um, if we get on to actually what you started to do with the project, um, how did you start? Um, what's this screen telling us? Looking on this page here, we've got um, just here in the top left, this is the unit title of this particular group from their qualification. So what we allowed them to do was to just develop what they were doing, create a working space for them. You can see in the bottom left-hand corner, I started doing tweets, and they were automatically updating um, and showing just things that I think are relevant to their subject area on that particular unit. As they went through it, they individually put on their working criteria, put a few things on that the person themselves didn't find with music. But more importantly for me is the canvas um, on the bottom of the screen there. That was the core of this unit really, and then understanding how the canvas network on a car works, very similar to the canvas network, as you might say, on a series of computers in an office. I see. So this was using Mahara um, sort of as an e-portfolio. Mm -hmm to allow learners to upload resources from, from their iPad, from the sessions, and also to collaborate and be able to share their, their work with you as the tutor as well. Absolutely. It became a good working space for all of us. OK. And, and they can collaborate with each other as well through, through Mahara, Absolutely. for those people who aren't familiar with what Mahara is. OK, and what are we looking at here then? This goes a little further into the Mahara and shows the work starting to develop. You can see from the middle one, the middle image we've got there, they've done some kind of ideas and set up their ideas onto a normal spider diagram on some flip charts. But they were using the tablets to actually record that information, take photographs, make notes, photograph uh, some of the parts. You can just see at the bottom of the screen there was a project they were doing. They started photographing all their images. Now, the key thing for me was the tablet made it just a one-stop shop. So they had their camera, they had their ability to save their work, they could type, they could search the internet, and keep it all in one package rather than having several devices. So all the functionality you needed was on the iPad, really? Indeed. So how did the iPads help to integrate theory sessions and for the underpinning knowledge and practical sessions? Well, look at the two images we've got on the screen there. Um, on the right-hand side, you can just see on the screen of the um, iPad there, that was a package that we started using called Evernote. Um, there are many other types. That's just the one that I came across and used quite a lot. The beauty of this is anything they've done in the classroom, whether it be on the iPad, whether it be on the PC, because it's multi-platform, it can be used on different um, devices, actually allow them to move into the workshop, go back to information they've possibly forgotten, notes they've left at home, and they're all held actually on the server. So even if they didn't get their original iPad back, if they used a different uh, PC at a time, they can actually find their information and recap what they've already done. OK, so for those of you who aren't aware then, and just a little bit about Evernote, it is an app that's available for both um, Apple and Android devices. And it has got multiple functionality. It does allow you to take images, to take notes, to record audio, um, to share. Thank you, Phil. And it also um, synchronizes in the cloud so that you can pick up your work and an account if you log on to a PC or on your mobile phone, as well as on the, the tablet device. So there was no excuse then for learners saying, forgotten my notes, no, lost my notes, because everything that they did was um, stored on their iPad. Well, Stella's uh, sharing something there with us, that Catch Note is another good one for this purpose. Not one I've heard of, but thank you for sharing that, Stella. So what's happening here then, Mark? Going further into the link in the theory and the practice, Evernote was a good place to take a lot of photographs, do videos. But there's actually a photograph on the screen now of educations that have been Snapchat, Snapchatted and put into um, Evernote. 
what's happening there is some work that we've done making um, electrical diagrams in the classroom is being brought into the workshop and have been screencasted at one stage so that when they actually go home they could rewatch it back, understand what's been said, take in the audio and the visual at the same time. But also in the workshop when I ask them to put that into practice, they can watch it back before they go and do it. So that's great tool really for um, differentiation so that learners can revisit resources whenever they want, wherever they want, and go through things as, as, as often as they need to really. Absolutely, it links the theory and the practice together, but also it takes learning outside the classroom, because equally as this is a screencast, they could log on to this and actually have a look at it at home. Right. Um, again, for those of you who aren't aware, EduCreations is an app that's available for both Apple and Android devices, which allows you to take images and annotate them and record over them and basically produce little screencasts, which you can then share with others. There are other apps that do the same sort of thing. Um, EduCreations is a free one. Uh, Explain Everything is another one which there is a small charge for uh, and Show Me is another one and some of you may have tried doing screencasts or getting your learners to do screencasts um, on mobile devices using similar apps. So how else did you use the iPad to support um, management of learning in the classroom? Well, you can see the image on the screen there, and the QR code became kind of fundamental to what we were doing in the classroom, because the QR code allowed me to put an image like this on the back of a chair, and there was one on every one of the chairs. The learners could turn around, take their iPad, do the QR read, and that would take them to a set of notes that I'd pre-prepared, or to an image, or to a video I'd like them to watch. But often what I tend to do is put my learning outcomes on them, so they'd always got an access to, this is what we're about to learn, this is how we're going to learn, and these are the tasks that you need to do in this session. Right, so it was useful for keeping learners on task. And how did it help you as a teacher? Did it sort of free you up a little bit to work with learners in, in a different way? Indeed, the key for me was the learners that needed more of my attention uh, could have that because the learners that were a little bit more independent could keep referring back to this and going, OK, this is what my next, ta next task is, this is what I should have achieved by now, and just keep themselves moving. Uh, for the learners that were struggling, it allowed them to keep looking back at it several times to allow that information to digest slowly. So they always knew what they were supposed to be doing and were signposted to resources to help them to achieve, achieve that. So it's sort of personalising the learning really and allowing you to sort of support those learners that needed, needed the extra support. Um, here's an interesting image with a mix of old technology, post-it notes and a bit of new technology. Tell me a little bit about what's going on here. Well, the key for me was I didn't want to get too much into using one thing only. I wanted to kind of blend to make sure that I've got different things for the learners to experience. And the key for me here was doing a bit of a recap in the session. And the ones that weren't so sure had the ability to go to the QR code that was on the not sure comment um, and then just go back to it, some pre-prepared stuff that I put forward that allows them just to go back to that, redevelop it and try and understand it a little further while I start the next task for the ones that did understand and then get them going when I can come back to people that hadn't understood. So just give that a really good differentiation. So, yeah, that sounds an excellent idea, actually. So these QR codes were really to support those learners who were unclear yes. and needed to revisit materials. Absolutely. OK, thank you. Right, so we've heard a little bit from uh, Mark about what he's done so far, but I'd just like to stop at this point uh, and ask if any of you, particularly those who said you've already done a bit of mobile learning in the classroom, um, would like to share some of the apps that have worked well for you in your context. context. So if you'd like to tell us something, then maybe you can raise your hand using the little icon above the participants list and we can hand over the microphone to you. Or maybe you want to just type what you've used in the chat pane. So we'll give you a moment. So if you want to have the microphone, just raise your hand, and I'll arrange for you to be able to speak.
Okay, we've just got uh, Ginny so far, who's um, said that she has used Socrative, which is a very nice app, which works for formative assessment uh, and allows you to not have to spend money on expensive clicker type things like Quizdom or uh, the smart boards, Sensio devices. Uh, it's a free app that allows you to do formative assessment in the classroom using mobile devices. Dasha has shared a couple. eClicker, a very similar app for formative assessment to Socrative. Um, yeah, David has used the Explain Everything ones, which is very similar to the Edu Creations to create screencasts. SlideShark is another one for sharing presentations with your learners, yes. And David used Socrative as well. Thank you. Right, oh, thank you for sharing that. Oh, what's that one, Dasha? Anatomy, anatomy. Do you think that's anatomy apps? Probably. Yes, yeah, specialised subject specific apps, maybe. Collaborative spaces like uh, 6D and Padlet which are a bit like sort of cork boards in the cloud for putting post-it notes and sharing. Ooh, quite a few coming through now, thank you. Some of these are subject specific and some of them are more generic apps. Coach's Eye, yes, that's another one particularly used in sports context, I think, to allow people to um, video some action in a sporting context and then freeze frame and annotate and review uh, techniques. No, there isn't an Android app for educations. Um, there is one called Show Me that works, um, I think, on Android. But there isn't an educations one. OK, thank you for all that sharing. That's quite useful. So let's do a bit of reflection now on, uh, again, really to do with the, the challenge of why you decided to undertake this project and change the way you delivered your curriculum. Yes, yeah, looking at the, the images we've got on the screen now, um, learners, and particularly young learners, have started to open very rapidly with using IT in the classroom. As we look at the bottom image, more and more students of our age that we get in FE College, they're using them in their personal life and for their revision and for recording their notes. So it seems a little bit old fashioned to just expect them to use a pen and paper in the classroom, to use textbooks only, flip charts and post notes. So redeveloping it was because the learner driver really actually demanded that it happened. So in addition to the skills required by the industry changing, um, learners skills and the way they want to learn has changed as well because the technology has made, made it more available to them and so you wanted to respond to their expectations to some extent. So education's changed, the, the world we live in has changed and society's changed a little bit too, hasn't it? Indeed, I mean the images there reflect very well on what my upbringing was like at school and if you had one of those watches you were the height of fashion and you had every bit of technology you ever needed. Uh, but yeah, times have changed now and this doesn't reflect the modern student. This is more reflecting one student in the kind of students that I see having multiple devices and quite a lot of money in their bag or in their pocket but at least on their person. Yes, that certainly seems like some of the typical learners that I've encountered. So going back to how you use the devices um, with your learners, did you have to establish any ground rules when using the devices in the classroom? Indeed, yes. Initially, uh, we let them have a little play and get familiar with them because obviously it's a huge step for some of the learners that hadn't got this kind of technology at home because not all learners have this, so it's, it's a good point to point that out. But the key for me was making sure they use them appropriately. I don't mind so much if the odd text message or email gets sent, but if it becomes a continuous conversation, obviously I've got to manage that. But generally, the learners did adapt very well to that ruling. And you did allow them to personalise and put some apps on, on the devices themselves, didn't you? So I gather that lent, led to some problems and you're rethinking that for next yeah, year. Yeah, I mean, without being stereotypical, um, the kind of learners that I had were very male. Uh, there was very few females in this kind of group in our course. And they were just downloading game after game after game. Right, so that's definitely something you would change for, for next year. Okay. 
Uh, let's think a little bit now about the sustainability of the project and what you've done, because clearly uh, the funding for the project allowed you to purchase the iPads, and you've got a class set of 10 or 11 of them now. Um, but how are you going to sustain this moving forward? Are you going to be buying more devices or thinking of going down the BYOD route? Or what about digital inclusion as well? Um, interesting that you point those out because with the iPad, we looked at the fact that even if we had the iPad 1, we still would have a very useful device, and that's quite outdated now in some respects. So the longevity of using the iPad is going to be quite a long time. However, the key thing for me was the BYOD, the bring your own device, as you say, because if a person is very, very um, used to using a particular device, why stop them using that device? Um, and the key for me is you are going to have that learner that comes in just says, I forgot my device, it's broken, or more importantly, that particular learner couldn't afford to bring a device. So the inclusion side is important. We will purchase more iPads and possibly some um, Galaxy, uh, Galaxy tabs as well. The key for that is if a learner is in that situation, we have something to provide for them. We do have that duty of care. So it's more for supplementing and supporting those who uh, would be disadvantaged if they didn't have access to, to their own device. But definitely the familiarity of working with your own device, it, it makes things a lot easier for the teacher as well, I think. It does. And I think part of the job of the teacher is probably to make learners aware of all the functionality that they have got on their own device, rather than just using it for texting and watching YouTube videos. Um, so to put on things like that can help them with their and support them with their learning, like their Evernote app and um, another app Absolutely. as well. So that's part of our job, I think, as a teacher, isn't it, to improve their digital literacy skills. Okay. So we had a question from Ginny uh, a little bit earlier in the chat pane, which I haven't responded to yet. Uh, and Ginny was saying something about, um, what about books in all of this? So is it just you're going to use technology and no textbooks, or have books still got a place in the 21st century classroom workshop environment? So what do you guys think? Uh, are traditional resources still relevant? It'd be good to hear what you think. Ah, you meant how many are suitable for iPad use? Textbooks. OK, I see what you mean. Now, if we could still uh, just get people to respond to this question first, and then we'll, we'll come back to that, Ginny. So, so far out of the 30 or so of us in the room, we've got 17 saying strongly, yes, we still have a place for traditional resources and, and textbooks. Um, and just one person not quite so sure. So yes, that's, I, I would agree with that entirely. I think you would, wouldn't you, Mark? 100%, yes. Um, the key for me is if I go to a textbook and find exactly what I want, whether it be electronic or whether it be a hardback version, uh, but the students on the internet just find their research skills very, very difficult. Yes, I mean, we, need, we do need to encourage independent learning as well. And um, we can have ebook versions of a lot of the textbooks now, a lot of the um, publishers are producing either a website which supplements um, their text, which learners could then access as well via their mobile device. Uh, but definitely, it's all about blending, blending the old and the new together. There's no one size fits all. Some people prefer books in some context, and in other contexts, they'll prefer um, using digital formats. So let's reflect back on the project then, which has been in place for almost a year now. Absolutely. Learners have come to the end of their course. Um, so from their perspective, how did they respond and what was their feedback about having access to these iPads? The learners were really excited. Um, their attendance, their punctuality went through the roof and was absolutely fantastic in the initial phase of it. As the novelty kind of died down, that did kind of plateau a little. But the learners really enjoyed using them. They enjoyed the functionality, and particularly the multi-platform side of it, where things worked on their device, their personal device, and even their computer at home. Um, 
but the more important thing for me was actually realising that learners found it very difficult to type on the iPads for a prolonged period of time. So we still were bringing in the netbooks and the laptops to kind of negate that side of it. Did it help at all in um, them completing their assignments on time or in a more timely manner or in terms of the way they uh, submitted evidence for their assignments? It did, but probably in a different way to my initial thoughts. Um, I thought they would utilise them and just progress forward, but what was more important was the collaborative side of it. Uh, particularly if a student had missed something in an assignment, you could often go back and find something they've written on the horror from their iPad, or something they've taken a photograph of and annotated or a screencast they've done, and actually just reference that part of it for the assignment. Okay, thank you. So they weren't having to do extra work because sometimes they've just done it in the natural course of things and recorded things as they're going along. And so putting the evidence together to complete an assignment became an easier task for them and less of a hurdle. Easier for them, possibly more difficult to me, uh, but that's not relevant really. The most important thing is the learner found it easier. Okay, thank you. Um, and it was really just you as a tutor uh, with this group of le 11 learners um, for the project, wasn't it? Yeah. So from your perspective, um, how is it changed your practice um, and what difficulties have you um, encountered? The first difficulty was going back to what we said at the start really, that I'd never used an iPad 12 months ago. Um, so there was a particular colleague of mine, I think it's in the room today, Mel, and she'd worked very, very hard with me because she had a lot more noise than I did. And without that support in and out of the classroom, I think the project would have actually failed. Right. Uh, because it was about me developing my skills, so I was possibly the biggest barrier to start with. Uh, but from a tutor perspective, now I'm a lot more confident with it. It's changed the way I deliver my lessons. I look a lot more holistically at what I'm trying to achieve as opposed to this is a piece of information you need to know. And then the students then feed off that as well and have that ability just to, to do the independent side of their learning. Okay, and what about other colleagues who must have seen you um, and your learners going through this experience? Um, how are you going to get them on board? Are they sort of interested in wanting to get involved too? It's starting to happen, um, but a little bit like myself when I first started, the kind of vision is limited because you don't fully understand how to use the device. Um, people that are using them already would understand it, so that's a benefit. But a lot of my colleagues are not. Um, the biggest thing for those is it's actually forgetting that you can just go on the internet and actually thinking, how can I use this device to do something better and easier? Okay. Um, and what about your manager from their perspective? Um, how are they? What are their thoughts on the sustainability, uh, or maybe having greater financial investment in in mobile technology? Yes, I mean the man's have been very supportive of me trying this, um, and are now looking at rolling it out more and more. And the reason for that is because I've done a lot more screencasting of evidence, and Ofsted particularly um, can see things that I've done through the year. So you can see the learner journey. They can go back to, say, February and go, the learners were doing this at this point, they've made a few mistakes, it's been corrected, and then they've moved on and recorded the information for assessment. I think the Ofsted perspective is, is very important because of the new emphasis on um, effective use of technology both inside the classroom and resources but also how learners are supported outside the classroom as well. And by having that collaborative thing, um, obviously that's helped a lot. And you can actually, as you say, show the learner journey through their Mahara pages, through their e-portfolio, how they've been given feedback and supported on, on their journey. Indeed. So that must be a very pos positive sort of selling uh, feature, I think. Um, right, next. Um, so, what are the, the key lessons learned and next steps for you for September? Okay, thinking back to the barriers as well, I mean, we've said that oh, I was one of the main barriers, but moving forward from that, I think one of the things that I've learned from this is not to allow the learners to have too much personalisation over the tablets. Uh, the main thing for me there is we're going to actually now have them on a house standard so that there will be a certain amount of apps put on them. They can't download as many games. There'll be certain games that I'm going to have preloaded on there and allow the learners to say, well, actually, could we use this in class? And then get IT to put them on for us. So we're going to just lock them down a little bit more, not to stop the learners, not to kind of stop what they're doing, but just to control the kind of the bad side of it where they're playing games all the time. Okay, but there is that does come with some additional cost, doesn't it, if you're going to manage the devices in that way. 
So things like the cost of a charging cabinet Indeed. and an Apple Mac and some software called Configurator, I think it is, That's isn't it? That's exactly right then. So that it can um, reset all the learner profiles after each session um, so that we haven't got any data protection yeah. issues. And, yeah. Because currently if I take them to IT and say, I've got 11 iPads, can I have them redone for this afternoon? I'll get that look that says you're pushing your look. Uh, yeah. but with a new device that we're looking at first, which is, as you said, a charging station and a Mac, it would be a couple of clicks on their keyboard on their Mac, and it would just do all of the iPads at once. So that would mean that that one set of iPads, instead of just being used with one class, could then be reconfigured with new profiles for other classes. Mm -hmm. OK, so you can extend that and, and roll that out uh, for September. Well, I found that a fascinating insight into your learning journey and that of your learners as well. Um, and I hope the listeners have too. Um, are there any questions that people would like to ask now? What do you want to say? I was looking here at uh, my colleagues from Moulton College that's put their learners can be assessed when using the speech to text, and that's a great idea. That's something I've currently looked into but not fully used, but I think that exactly that, where a learner is struggling to write things down and it can be put into text via what they've said. I think it's great support. Yes, there are, there are quite a few apps available that will actually convert speech to text, either web-based or as part of the uh, free open source My Study Bar suite of apps. There is um, a speech to text conversion there. Julie, you've got a question. Hi, Julie. This is Lynn. Uh, Julie's an old colleague of mine. Is she? Yeah. Uh, what support did you have from senior management in all this? If just to be clear, you mean senior management is in the executive team. Um, they were very supportive, but mainly down to the fact that um, my immediate uh, line manager is very passionate about this development. So he will have spent a lot of time convincing them. So if you've got that kind of background support, it wasn't such a difficult thing. Plus, the college is looking to move forward very rapidly and try and progress. So the support was there, but there was still a bit of a, a tentative, this needs to be trialed first before it's rolled out on a bigger scale. I think they have been quite impressed, haven't they, with the results of the project. Indeed. And you've also presented this at um, an ELSIS national conference as well. We did. And obviously, that all adds to raising the profile of Loughborough College as a good place to come and study. Absolutely. Forward thinking in terms of preparing learners for the world of work and, and raising their digital literacy skills as well. So thank you for that question. So I think that just about finishes our discussion here today. Is there any more questions, please? Ah, there's a few more there, sorry. So what can you achieve with only one iPad? That's a very good question, actually, because initially I was trialing this with one iPad, and it was an iPad 2. Um, and there was quite a lot I could achieve, but I was limited by one factor, and that was the connectivity of, I forget the term, Mel, who's in the room as well, would remember this, where we could actually beam from one iPad to the smart board. Uh, we never actually got that to be reliable. Um, okay. If we could have got that reliable, then I would have been using the iPads and the apps just to display them and get the learners working from one iPad to the main board. Yes, I mean, you can get a VGA connector, for instance, as a teacher, to connect your iPad to a data projector to display all of that. Um, and so you could use it in that way as a teaching aid and maybe demonstrate some screencasts or some particular um, apps that you think that learners might be useful to have on their own smart devices. Absolutely. Uh, another question there from Nigel. Yes, you put there what technical problems did um, I encounter, like recharging batteries, machines not working, etc. And if I'm very honest, the moment I forgot to put them on charge overnight was big because they do take quite a while to charge, but they will last the whole day if they're done overnight. So trying to charge them in class or in between lessons was not advisable at all. It was an overnight charge. And that's definitely where the charging cabinet comes yes, in, it and it's worth that additional cost. It's probably about £3,000 by the time you've got a Mac and a charging Absolutely, cabinet yeah. um, and the software to actually manage the devices properly. And it then takes the pressure off you as a teacher yeah, then. It does. Question from Darren as well now. Oh, I mentioned about estimated cost then. The software for iPad management, um, you've got something called Apple Configurator. 
and we can put some information about that on our um, resources for after the event actually. So we'll share that on our Moodle afterwards and put more details about that. Yes, and Mel was just uh, making a point there in the chat pane that uh, where we were trying to get the iPad connectivity from one iPad to the smart board, it was called Air Server. And uh, Ginny's mentioned one called AirPlay there as well. Thank you. There are quite a few that will do that similarly and project what's on the iPad uh, onto the screen onto a screen. Thank you, Dasha, for sharing um, how you're deploying your devices and for that link to your blog and your project. Thank you. Configurator, yes, and Phil's put the link to uh, Configurator in the chat pane. Thank you very much for that, Phil. Are there any more questions? Or anybody who wants to share anything else? OK, well, I'd like to um, round that up and just thank Mark Hooker from Loughborough College very much for sharing his experiences with us of how he's used the iPads in the motor vehicle department at Loughborough College. And just to remind you, of a few more webinars that are happening over the next couple of days that you might be interested in. 